a labyrinth of shrubs and swamps between land and sea. The best way to explore the mangroves is by boat, along its meandering waterways fringed with lianas and aerial routes. We are in DL Congo's only marine park, a forest of 25,000 hectares on the mouth of the Congo River. Tomamfu knows all of its secrets. It's a transitional forest between the open sea and inland areas. It links the two environments and it protects the coast against marine erosion. It also stores large quantities of carbon. So in other words, the mangrove is a very important bulwark against climate change. The park was created in 1992 and was designated a Ramsar site, that is a wetland of international importance, in 1996. It's now protected. Only a few dozen fishermen are allowed to live here. They've been around for several generations. <laughs> Blanchard dives every day to harvest wild oysters known as bibwati. You dive to the bottom to look for shells and it's your ability to hold your breath that determines how many you bring back every time. If you can't hold your breath for long, you're going to collect one oyster at a time and you're going to have to dive many, many times to make sure you collect enough. When his boat is full, Blanchard paddles back to his island. Locals call it the Shell Island because it's entirely covered with oyster shells. There's no electricity here and hardly any phone signal. Its inhabitants are cut off from the world. What brings us joy is to live in the middle of this beautiful environment, on the water. This is where we get our food from, our protein. And the trees provide us with firewood to cook. A way of life that respects the mangroves and its rich ecosystem. Many endangered species are found in the park, including olive ridley sea turtles who lay their eggs on these beaches every year. To protect them, park staff move the nests into this enclosure and monitor them until the eggs hatch. There are many predators, so if we leave the nests in the wild, crabs or crows will destroy them. And then locals also eat turtles. It's a major concern for us, because when people see the nest, they dig up the eggs and take them. It's time for the newborn babies to take their very first dip into the Atlantic Ocean. Christian is sad to let them go, but he knows he'll see them again. After seven years, when they're adults, they will come back here. To lay their eggs, females always return to the exact spot where they were born. That's right, they're very loyal animals. More than 80,000 baby turtles have been released into the ocean over the past 10 years, a major victory for the park. 15 rangers watch over it and its precious ecosystem with an annual budget of less than $100,000. Every day, by boat and on foot, they patrol the mangroves to ward off poachers and smugglers. That day, the patrol comes across a makeshift charcoal kiln. Illegal logging is a major threat to the mangroves, and fast population growth has made the problem worse. Every time we come, we organize patrols to destroy the kilns, to discourage them. But there are people who still build them, and when we speak to them, they say, we don't have jobs, what else can we do? While the region is rich in biodiversity, locals live in extreme poverty. Neither tourism nor offshore oil production have benefited the population. Now the construction of a deep water port in Banana, just a few hundred meters from the mangroves, is causing concern among scientists. But for local NGOs, it offers promises of a better future. We're going to make sure that authorities stick to the original plan, so that the impact on the ecosystem remains limited, especially the bigger boats. But our position is clear. It is to support a project that will bring economic development to the region. The Congolese government insists the project will not have any adverse consequences on the mangroves and will create thousands of jobs. However, no environmental impact assessment has been made public to this day. <laughs>